Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's the Giants going up against the 49ers. Forget about the drought. The rain is coming down hard at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara as we bring in our broadcast duo of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Guys. Larry, I'm not sure it'll solve the California drought problems, but it's coming down in buckets right now as we welcome you inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Levi's Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was deafening. They're set for football as the 49ers get ready to do battle with the New York Giants. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Let's field it a few yards into the end zone. <laughs> and he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. C.J. Beathard bringing out the San Francisco 49ers. They're coming off a 33-10 defeat to Philadelphia last week. You called that game. Well, Beathard not his best game. And now Garoppolo coming in. So we'll see what happens at the QB spot. Yeah, I wouldn't expect a change in this first week, but I would expect the change after that They're Jimmy, so that Jimmy Garoppolo takes over the starting position. I think with C.J. Beathard, a rookie out of Iowa, does a lot of good things, calm, cool, collected. Very inaccurate in the last game against Philadelphia. Had a chance to make some completions for first downs, but threw the ball behind receivers. They'll give Jimmy Garoppolo every chance to be the future quarterback for San Francisco. They go play action here on first down. And his first pass is incomplete. The intended receiver, Marquise Goodwin, and it's second down. And a quick look now at the offense for the 49ers. Marquise Goodwin brings plenty of speed and jumping ability as befits an Olympic long jumper. He made the team in 2012, as you might remember. But what also he's looking for is an increased role as a wide receiver after leaving Buffalo. Second down now after the incompletion. First carry for Carlos Hyde. And oh, a little spin cycle. Room to run now. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. I think we saw some of the best qualities of Carlos Hyde on that run. Able to pick up something there, being physical running the football. But I think he's got really good vision and great feet. He's going to be the key to this offense really being revitalized. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They run again with Hyde on first. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. They'll give to Hyde, and he'll get this down only to about the 46. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. 
Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. First down here at about the 40. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Yeah, once more, a strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. Look at a nice little drive brewing right here. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. And Garrett Selleck here on the completion. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good, that middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right, probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well, <laughs> and he's got it. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And it's complete in the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Gold on for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So this drive spans seven plays, and the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. Pinion now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. They'll be led out by the veteran quarterback, a multiple-time Pro Bowler. It's, of course, Eli Manning. Had another nice season a year ago. His sixth 4,000-yard campaign, but even more importantly, got his Giants back into the playoffs with an 11-5 mark after three straight losing seasons. They fake the handoff. Now Manning. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And no, incomplete. Boy, they took a shot there on the first play, trying to start it out with a bang. But it's second down. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident.
second down following the incompletion. A first carry now for Paul Perkins. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. On first down, back to Perkins. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 more yards there and another first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. So here we go, first and 10 now. And now a carry here for Orleans Darquan. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. forward to about the 48-yard line. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves them with a third down at eight. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long, and that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Working from the gun, Manning. Here as he's taken down, Aaron Lynch able to track him down for a loss of 13, and it'll bring up fourth down. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. The fourth-year man from LSU, Brad Wing, to punt it away as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. You know, San Francisco, Charles, as, as they come back out for offense, yes, they're 0-8, first time that they've started like that in franchise history. But let's remember, five straight losses by three points or fewer, and you feel like they're starting to build something, don't you? I do. I think that the front office is coming together and is drafting better. I think they're doing a better job in free agency. I think that they have a cohesive unit between owner, general manager, and head coach, and the proper vision that all three of them share. The, the tough part is what you'd mentioned, five straight losses by three points or less, and the head coach is like, okay, Kyle Shanahan's like, enough of this, all right? No more out of boys for getting close. He would like the few out of boys the last two weeks, though, because Dallas and Philadelphia, they routed him. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second in about a yard. In today's NFL, it might have surprised some people, but San Francisco was really, really hot to pick up Kyle Juszczyk from Baltimore, and they acquired him. 
Why? He can do everything. Block it? Yeah, of course he can. But he can catch the ball well in the backfield, too. Led all fullbacks in receptions the last two years and played in his first Pro Bowl a season ago. On second down, high. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Two yards to go here on third down. They'll run it. Here's high. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Fresh set of downs here. From the pistol, they'll run with high. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That was another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. Second down and four. Here we go now. Now Beathard. And Salik here, left side. And he'll get up near the 45. He'll spot it at the 44. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, I mean, when, he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? So the offense has it first and ten. Now a handoff as they run left side. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Back to the ground. This time it's high. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They run it again with Hyde. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. All right, here we go. Green, 39. A give left to high. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the player there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. 
He had a great read there from his free safety position. And, Charles, you know with those guys, it's all about their eyes. They have to be laser-focused. Yeah, I had to fake my way through it when I was playing, but now I can see exactly what they're doing. And on that play, he obviously had no presence to feel like he's being pushed for a pass. And without that, that allowed him to get up to the line of scrimmage and hold him to no gain. And he's going to go out of bounds, taking it down inside the 25. 19 yards that time for number 19. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive. and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he's got it, and he doesn't quite make it. They do stop him, but he gets it all the way down to the one. A good pick up there, a 22. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it, we can always lock in on the skill position, guys. Those big fellas up front, they're really making this offense go early in the game. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They come out here in the eye. Bethel. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. B.J. Goodson in from his linebacker's spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal at the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw for it, but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down. And we will not see another play as time has run out on this first quarter. 7-0 is our score. We're back to Santa Clara after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the 49ers in control of the football. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Here's Beathard to throw. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Damon Harrison in there to get him, and this pass rush strong now. That sacks on back-to-back -back plays. So once again, they dial up the pressure and get home and get a sack. It brings up a third and long, but it's really not an unmakeable one, especially considering they just gave up back-to-back -back sacks. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. Here we go now. Blue 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 ah! To throw is Bethard. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. A gain of five, but not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Yeah. 
On fourth down, Kyle Shanahan will send out the field goal unit. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. So a 15-play drive. Can't believe that only resulted in three, but it did. That is somewhat amazing, isn't it? When you hold the ball that long, run offense that well, yet only put three points on the board, it has to be a little bit of a disappointment, doesn't it? Has to. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. They'll let Perkins carry to start the drive. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Second down, Perkins. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can't he? Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with the defense will give him. Perkins on first down. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. When you put together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. Perkins. Nice stiff arm. Underused, but still effective. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, that's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit, because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. First and ten, here's Manning. And he's going to be wrapped up and 
and driven down. Earl Mitchell with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. some breathing room and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain a four yard pickup that gets him going forward but still 15 yards left on third down that's a really good job right there just kept stringing that play out pushing further and further towards the sideline really good fundamentals by that defense he was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field he just couldn't no they really had a picket fence in front of him no room to find to get up field on third and long it's Manning a dump off to Vereen. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Brad Wing now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. And let's look at Carlos Hyde now. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. And a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. The Niners on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and eight. Lampard, Lampard. Back to throw Bathard. And he can't get away from the pressure. The Giants get there. Olivier Vernon in there to drop him for a four-yard loss. And it'll be fourth down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. In his third year on is the punter Bradley Pinion to kick it away. Standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Returnable here from the 38. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And it'll be giant football first and 10. 
And the Giants ready to come out now. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. The drive starts with a run by Perkins. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. Right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And while there was no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window. And they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. They go with Perkins again. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. The Giants on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Shotgun now for Manning. It's caught, Shepard. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Perkins on the give for Manning. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll lead here to a third down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. taken down but how about that athletic spin move we saw gives him the first down yardage call it a gain is seven and it gets him a new set of downs that's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game but obviously they had plenty of faith in him didn't they no question about it and here why not go with the fresh legs able to push forward pick up that first to go here in the first half. Back with more after this. A reminder coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now they'll throw it with Manning. 
Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Now Manning throwing on second down. A dump off to the flat for Perkins. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they've got it first and goal. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Manning. And that is caught. He's got it for a giant touchdown. Sterling Shepard from three yards out. And the Giants have got it back to a one-score game. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Rosas now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. throw here. Bethard. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Here's Beathard to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Carlos Hyde was the target, and it's third down. The Niners on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get this one up to the 26. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action.
Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Oh, what a move. A punt of 46, a return of five. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. Throwing on first down is Manning. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Operating from the gun, Manning. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. All right, I need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Throwing again. Manning. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. The Giants on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Now Manning again. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Here's Brad Wing now, as he's on to punt for New York. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They start the drive with high. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. 
So we've hit halftime here in Santa Clara with the 49ers out in front as we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report. Here's Larry Ridley. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The 49ers are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Giants just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. Now first and 10, the pass is completed into tight coverage. This play goes for a score as they take a 7 with a lead. Giants now on third and eight. Lynch has got the sack here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Niners take it at the one. Goodson's gonna take down the QB here. This will go as a loss of 10. Giants with the ball late in the half. Manning's gonna complete the pass and he kept off the long drive with the touchdown. The Giants now down by just three. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And a big mistake on the return. He's out of bounds at his own one-yard line. All right, partner, get that disapproving look off of your face. He did get it out to the one-yard line. Yeah, I know. Wasn't the best play in the world. He's hoping his offense can bail him out. And now out come the Giants. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. To Perkins, and he will forge his way forward only up to the two yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know, the pressure is going to be tough defensively. See if they stay on the ground for second down. to Perkins and he was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone he maybe got back to the two yard line no gain on the play there so that doesn't help now they're looking up at a third and nine situation third down from the two fourth down lurking but one more shot here what do you do Charles I think you run it here try and create some space get your punter a little bit more room and if you're really lucky you get enough space to get a first down but I think right now the big thing is take care of the football get space for your punter and get rid of the ball Mr. Conservative yeah I do kind of wear that well then <laughs> and they're going to get the first out here as he's up to the 14 trying to find some space to operate and now they'll have it a gain of 12 a big first down to get away from the end zone offense comes to the line now first and 10 give it's Perkins and he'll be taken down at the 18. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. Second down following the run. Manning going to 
to give to Perkins on the draw. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. And he'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. The Giants on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and seven. Play action, Manning. It's hauled in by Shepard. 15 yards through the air and a first down. there the O-line everybody really on offense they were just manhandled at the point of attack yeah you could pretty much call them all out couldn't you and <laughs> almost by name right that was a very tough sequence for the offensive line but how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility a little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave him with still about eight or nine to go on third down. The Giants on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and nine. From the gun, Manning to Shepard, complete over the middle. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's gonna fight his way forward here for a modest game. And they give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. On the run, it's Perkins. Even with the good footwork, he'll be stopped just inside the 35-yard line. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball... He's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They'll try to pick it up with Perkins. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulder square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. Ooh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Now 
Darkwa. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. To him just inside the 15, even after that strong run we witnessed. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Manning going to try and throw on third down. The quick slant caught. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Throwing is Manning. It's incomplete. For pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? They come out with one back and three tight ends. Now whistles here and a flag down. I think a giant jumped early. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Manning to throw on second down. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. Five yards that time on the completion, and now it's third and goal. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. The offense on third down, they've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. They're looking at a third and goal here. Again, they'll throw with Manning. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas, for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. 
And the kick by Rosas is good. And that will knot us up at 10. Well, they started this drive in as tough a spot as you can at their own one. So they're able to march it into field goal range and get three. I thought that was a very poised, dare say classy sort of a drive. Backed up in the shadow of your own end zone, yet you come out of it and put points on the board. Well executed. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This will be taken in at the one. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically, but a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. shy of the 40 despite powering through the tackle. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. They'll throw. That's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Niners on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and four. Here we go. Here's Bathard to throw. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Pretty heavy traffic over the middle on that one, and somehow he emerged with the football. Way to possess it, despite all the extra contact and people around him. to throw is Beathard. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Ten yards still left on second down. Incomplete. Right. 
The Niners on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and ten. He'll look to throw. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. Knotted up here at 10. That's our score as we begin quarter number four. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for San Francisco. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And New York set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They go counter. Perkins trying to run inside, but nothing there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. But he was stopped on that play. But he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. So second and ten here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Only a yard of the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. Working from the gun, Manning. Over the middle here to Rudolph. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. And now a first down following that long gain. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The rookie from Alabama, Reuben Foster. And it'll be a second and long. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. Takes it down to the 42, a five-yard run. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. Shot. 
Shotgun now for Manning. To Vereen out in the flat. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter time. And this won't get there, won't be on line either. It's no good, off to the right, and a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up, and they tend to play well. Back to throw Beathard. Blitz coming, and down he goes. B.J. Goodson in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll give to Hyde, and they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. And this defense continues to give them fits. They just can't get really anything going on the ground, can they? I love the theme that you just brought up. This defense has been tough all game long against the run. We just saw another example of it there. To throw is Beathard. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And New York set to take the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now Perkins. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. With that kind of run on first down. That's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was. Handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. 
Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Not much there, maybe a couple up to the 35. And the offense needs seven out of this play on third down. Operating from the gun. Manning, he's got the first down and more past midfield. And he gets it down deep into San Francisco territory. It's a big play for the Giants on third down. 47 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. See if they stay on the ground for second down. From the gun. Manning, and his throw is incomplete. Play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. They'll run here with Vereen. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The timing and the faking on that play was so good, you almost think you're at a magical act, right? The magician has shown you something, and then you realize it's not really there. He's created an illusion, and the illusion was they were going to throw the football. Looked like a pass play. Instead, it turned into a draw. Offensive linemen able to get out in front. They drew the defensive line upfield and beat them at their own game, and that's why they picked up big yardage into the secondary. First down and goal to go from the seven. First and goal, Perkins. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines is extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. And at this stage in the game, every play is magnified here as we get down to the nitty-gritty. Back to Perkins on second and goal. And he'll be stopped about a yard shy of the goal line after a pickup of about three. Now, what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead, so how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about it if you're confident in your kicker. And if you got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down 
In an ideal scenario, your kicker puts it through the post as the clock hits zeros. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. And they're facing a big third down now in this tie ball game. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They'll run with Darquan. And he's going to go backward. They get him behind the line. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So a big one coming now for Aldrich Rosas. This for the lead in the final stages. And Rosas puts this one through. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Well, now then, it's a big kick right there to give him the lead in the fourth. But, Charles, there is still time left for a final drive. Brandon, you know they would have liked to take the clock down just a little bit further, at least under a minute or so. But this was not over yet, especially since they just need a field goal. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Boy, oh, shifts past him. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Back to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Garrett Selleck, the tight end, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. This defense so strong all afternoon long. Well executed again there. This is a group that really functions well off of each other. No matter what the assignment, the other person fills in in the exact proper spot. They've made it very, very hard for them to find open places to throw the football. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. He'll look to throw. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. The Niners on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and ten. 
He's back to throw. And now another one thrown incomplete. This defense looking impenetrable now. Three straight incompletions. They're giving them nowhere to go with the football. Maybe a little frustrated back there. Oh, there's no doubt about it. When you've missed on three straight, there's going to be some frustration. But now he's got to make sure that that frustration is temporary, not lingering. Big throw coming up. All right, here we go. Move, They'll look to throw. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Giants are going to take over in great field position. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, I've, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here. Fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. And the 49ers going to take another timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Second down following the run. Manning going to throw here. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Side linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. Right hash, 37 yard attempt. And the kick by Rosas is good. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game.
After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. Now Carlos Hyde gears up to take the field again. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. Just 21 seconds now as he spikes it to stop the clock. The Niners on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 17. Right, here we go. They'll throw here, Bathard. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. That would have been a tough catch, but in this two-minute drill, those are the ones you really hope your guys come up with. Yeah, you don't want your guy to be able to take the out because it was a tough catch. You needed him to come up with that one because if he does, it alters the perspective of this two-minute drill, doesn't it? So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. Hurry up, here we go. Green three. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to. Oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Andrew Adams. <laughs> Interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot, and now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. Manning will take a knee, and that should be the final act in this one. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Were you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you trust skeptical. it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly. Wise beyond his years. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL.